Hey friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the new Lawn Fawn Wild Wolves stamp set. And I'll be making a Tada Diorama interactive card, but we'll get to that later on. For now, I have stamped these images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So for the wools, I decided to start with some cool grays. I'm using C0, C1, C3, and C5, beginning with that C5 to lay in some shadows. Doing that on both the larger wolf and the small, so it could be mom and baby or dad and baby, whatever you want it to be. And I'm going to blend out that C5 with the C3, just making sure to catch the edge of the previous shade and kind of scrub over that and pull that color into the mid-tone. That way I can eliminate any harsh lines. Because these are wolves and they're going to be really furry, I want them to look nice and smooth and soft. So I will repeat that process for the baby wolf. So, so cute. I am absolutely in love with this new stamp set. Then I'll come in with the C1 and I'm gonna finish filling in all the darker parts of the body. So I'm just using the three darkest shades there for the main parts. And I am going to stop short on the belly and the tail. I wanted those to fade into a lighter area of the fur. So I left some white space and then I will transition into that white area with a little touch of the C0, just a few quick flicks there. And then I'm gonna go back to the C1 and add a little bit of shading on the white areas on the lower part of the wolves' faces and on the ruff around their neck. And I'll blend that out with the C0. And then this next step is completely optional, but I always like to give my critters some rosy cheeks. I think it just makes them look extra cute and cheerful. So I'm using RV10 and RV11 for that. I also colored in the insides of their ears and the open mouth of the wolf that is howling. Then I'm gonna move over to my trees and I decided to go with some E70s. They're a nice grayish, they're kind of in the brown family, but they have a lot of gray tone to them. So they really lend themselves to uh, things that, you know, happen in the night. So this is kind of gonna be a nighttime scene, not too dark, but um, I wanted more of a little bit of a spooky vibe, not like totally spooky, but, um, just kind of in that vein, especially since that's kind of how the trees are drawn. Um, they just kind of look a little bit creepy to me. So I wanted to just add in like these more desaturated tones. So I'm using E70, E71, E74, and E77. I'm going to color all the trees the same. But I did put the shading on the left for one of the smaller trees, on the right for the other small tree, and then on both sides for the center tree. And that was based on where I wanted them to go on the card. Although you'll see if you happen to notice in the end, I accidentally put the small trees on the wrong side, but I don't think it's really that noticeable. Um, I think it's still nice to have a highlight on one side, so it just adds a little bit extra depth. So I blended out the E77 with the E74, and then I brought in a little E71, but I wanted a really bright moon, so I wanted extra highlight on my trees to really reflect that, so that's why I brought in that fourth shade with the E70, um, but if you're doing like a darker scene, you could probably just use three shades and that would be fine. But I just wanted that extra depth like I mentioned. And I actually have another card using the Wild Wolves on the Lawn Fawn channel very, very soon where I use different color combos for both the wolves and the trees. So if you'd like to see them in a different combo, just stay tuned for that. You won't have to wait very long at all. So I'm moving on to the crow and I decided to go back to my cool grays, but I went with darker choices. So I went with C3, C5, and C7. 
making sure to put that C7 as far away from the face as I can. So on the back of the head, the bottom edge of the wing and the tail, and then blending out with the C5 and then adding that C3. And I left a little bit of white space there, which I will fill in in just a minute. But in the meantime, I decided to color in the rock with some toner grays using T1, T3, and T5. I just wanted a different combo than I had used on my critters. And then for the moon, I decided to go with like a blue glowing moon and I chose B000, B41, and B52. I'm adding the shading to the right side of the moon and then also to the right side of each of the craters with that B52, then blending out with the B41. And then I'm gonna come in with that B000 and start to blend that out even further. I also use that to fill in the white space on the crow to reflect that moonlight since he'll be pretty close to it. And then I wanted to make that moon glow even further by adding in a lighter shade with the B quadruple zero. And then I trim these images out with their matching dyes. So now I'm ready to start building my Tada diorama and I'm taking some Moonstone cardstock from Lawn Fawn as well as some pattern paper from the new Spiffier Speckles 6x6 pad. I'm actually going to use two different prints from this pad one for the back panel and one for the front panel. So I'm just going to grab the dies now and I'm gonna cut out the main piece, like I said, from that darker spiffier speckles. I'll also use the window creator on that one, just the main piece on the lighter spiffier speckles, and then I'll also cut the side panels and the bands from the moonstone cardstock. So there I have my different pieces. I'm going to set the main pieces and the bands aside for now. So I've got these two side panels and you can see that it embosses some lines on those panels and it creates sections that go large, middle, small. So I'm going to eventually fold on those score lines but before I do, I'm gonna take out these little slot creators and I'm going to place them in the middle section so that that little foot is pointing out toward the large section. And I will line that up with the little arrows pointing down at the bottom of the panel. Fits perfectly between those two score lines. And I'll run that through my die cutting machine. And then when I remove those, it's going to cut in these little slots on each of those panels for our inserts to fit in through. So I'm going to pop out those little slivers of cardstock with my fingernail, and then I'm going to grab my Teflon bone folder from Lawn Fawn, and I'm going to use that to fold the panels. I'm folding away from myself. All of the parts of this die, you fold away from yourself and with the front facing up, and then um, just use that bone folder to really crease that nicely so we have real crisp edges. So there you can see those two panels going big, middle, small, small, middle, big. I'm going to take some tape runner adhesive and run that all across the small pieces. And uh, that's the only place that I need to add tape runner to adhere these panels. Then I'll grab my main piece and with those panels folded in half with the slots pointing down, I'm going to line that up with the left side of that main back piece and then just press that into place. It'll leave a little bit of paper showing at the top and bottom edge, but it will be flush with the side. And then for the second one, I'm just going to butt that up against the first and make sure that's on there nice and straight with the first one. And there you can see we have the two side pieces attached to the main back piece. Next, I'm going to work on my inserts. And rather than use the one at the bottom that comes with the Tada diorama, I'm actually going to use the hillside inserts. I cut those out of some narwhal cardstock. And I'm going to fold those on the score lines as well and just crease those with my bone folder so they're also nice and crisp. I'll do that for both of those panels. 
and then fitting them into the Tada diorama is super easy. You just feed them through as they're folded and then once they are through you unfold those little flaps so it makes a T shape and that is going to hold that hillside insert or whichever insert you're using in place so it can't fall out. It's nice and secure in there. You can see that. So I'll just do the second one exactly the same. Just feed that through, open the little uh, tabs so it forms a T and then um, feed it through the other side and do the same and then they're in there really nice and securely and you can see how that die is working so far. Really fun! So I'm going to set that back mechanism aside for a moment to work on the front of my ta-da diorama. I've got my window main piece and then also my two bands and again I'm just folding along those score lines for the bands and then I will add some tape runner adhesive to each of those little tabs that are folded over. That's the only place you want to add adhesive. And then I'm going to flip that window piece over to the back and I'm going to line up that semicircle that is die cut out of the, uh, the bands with the semicircle that is die cut out of that front piece. So I'm just lining that up straight and then I'm going to feed the front flaps of the Tada diorama into the front window piece. Really easy to do, just feeding those through. And once I have that done, uh, that is basically the entire mechanism put together. So you just wanna make sure that everything is on there nice and straight, kind of smooth it into place, make sure that those folds are nice and crisp, and then you can start to play with your mechanism. And I think it slides a bit smoother the more you play with it as well. Um, so I just creased mine really tightly down, folded it nice and flat, and then there you can see how that's working. So I am going to work on my sentiment next, and I wanted to heat emboss that, so I'm treating some more narwhal pattern paper with the Rabbit Hole Designs powder tool, stamping my sentiment in Versamark ink, just just a clear sticky ink that works great for embossing because it's going to grab a hold of that white embossing powder. I'm going to coat that a couple of times to make sure it's really well covered and then I will heat up my heat gun off to the side for about 30 seconds and then I like to bring it to the back first and then the front just to help minimize some of the warping and melt that powder until it's all white and bright and shiny. And then I will pop my card base in my Misty as well. I'm actually going to create my Tada diorama on a standard size card today. So I've created an A2 card out of Moonstone cardstock. And I'm going to stamp in some Blue Jay ink. And I'm using the Wolf Couple and the sentiment that says, I'm glad you're in my pack. I stamped that down twice to make sure it was nice and bold. And then I will set that aside for now. I'm going to move on to some more pattern paper from the Favorite Flannel 6x6. I'm going to take out this lighter blue diagonal plaid and I'm going to trim that out with the largest of the large stitch rectangle stackables and then I will glue that to my card front and my glue was a little bit um, clogged because I have been away on vacation so I haven't used it in a little while so I just had to loosen that with the pin and then I am going to line that up on my card front make sure the corners are all nice and straight and smooth that into place and then I can add some more liquid glue to the back of my Tada diorama and I will make sure that that is all folded up straight so I can line it up in the center of the card and then I can press that down to adhere it as well. Then to add a little bit more to the front of my scene, I'm going to take that front piece again, which I die cut again out of Narwhal, and then trimmed down with the Simple Stitch Hillside Borders, and I'll add some tape runner to that and glue that down at the front to create a little hillside that's going to match the hillside inserts on the inside of that Tada diorama. I'll also take my sentiment, which I trimmed out with one of the banner dies that are included in the Tada diorama, 
and I'm going to glue that on the front bottom piece. So I actually added my tape runner to that window instead to just make sure I didn't end up with any adhesive kind of gunking up the mechanism and making my ta-da diorama not open. Now I'm ready to start to set my scene. So I'm gonna begin with the tallest tree and add that to the very back panel. And then while that is still wet, I'm going to add the moon next to that because I wanted it to fit behind. I wanted that tree to have some of the branches kind of extended in front of the moon. And then I'll take my little wolf and I'm gonna figure out my placement. I decided I wanted him on that back hillside. So I'm gonna use a little tape runner for that. I kind of switch back and forth between the tape runner and the liquid glue, just depending on where I was putting things. Tape runner um, I don't use very often, so it doesn't come quite as naturally to me as using the liquid glue, but the tape runner adhesive works really well for um, not having anything that's kind of like squeezing out. So for adding these little die cuts that you only want to be kind of perched on the edge of the hillside with a little bit more extended out, um, the tape runner works great for that. So I added the smaller wolf and the rock on the front hillside and I'm going to put my crow kind of sandwiched between that rock and the hillside as well. And so that crow is like barely on there. So I did have to fix that later on because when I started to open and close the ta-da diorama, he kind of shifted a bit. So I had to just push him down a little bit more to get him a more secure. And now I'm going to take the smaller two trees and add those to the outside of the panel. I'm just trying to make sure that they're not too much in the way of the little tabs that you need to pull. So I adjusted those a few times and there you can see I did accidentally adhere them in a different way than I imagined. I wanted the highlight to be on the inside where the moon is, but it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. But there is my very first ta-da diorama. It was super fun and easy to put together. And there is another peek at the inside. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already and ring that notification bell if you want to be alerted whenever I post a new video. All of the products that I use will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below in case you'd like to pick up anything from this brand new release for yourself. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.